Despero was a mouse who, in his own mind, was a giant. Don't worry, Mom. I'll be right back with supper. A mouse who found the castle of Dor and the world around it to be a place of wondrous adventure. Despero was a gallant mouse who didn't do what was expected of him, but was someone who saw the wonderful castle of Dora as a place of adventure. Oops. Mouse! Get him! Oops. Despero didn't know he was small. Despero, we don't ask that you be more like your brother, Furlo. We would never ask you to do that. We just ask that you be more like any other mouse. Just pick anyone. You choose. Because you are scaring everyone in town with your not being scared all the time. Your father's business is suffering. We even heard that the Mouse Council may be investigating you. You know what they do to people who don't follow the rules. They will send you down to the darkest depths of the castle, into the dungeon where the rats live! <laughs> Why are you making that face again? Because he's trying to scare you! That's what a good big brother does. He's trying to teach you the joys of fear. <sighs> Go to the kitchen with your brother and teach him how to behave properly. Maybe he'll learn to run away from things like a good mouse. The kitchen adventure took up a lot of energy, and Despero and Furlo were hungry. So they did the logical thing. They scurried from the kitchen to the library in search of something to eat. Look! A room full of stuff to eat! Uh, huh? Books, little brother! Books! To eat? Of course! Yummy paper and tasty glue served up in a yummy cardboard sandwich. Um... Yay! Yippee! I found an incredibly big and tasty book yesterday. You've got to get across the room over on the bookstand. Let's go dig in. Once upon a time. That's great, isn't it? You're not supposed to read it, Despero. You're supposed to eat it. I'll meet you back at home in an hour and no reading. I'm serious, Despero. It's a rule. You'll get in a lot of trouble. And when I say trouble, I mean the Mouse Council. Eat. Not read. Got it. Bye, Furlow. Bye! But Despero did read. He read and read. Once upon a time, there lived a princess fairer than any in any other land. But this princess was locked in the Castle of Sadness, able to see the world, but not to touch it. She longed for a prince, a brave knight who would deliver her from all of this. Someone with courage and honor and decency. Wow! Despero did devour the book, but not in the way furlough meant. And just moments after discovering the joys of reading, he discovered a pleasure that was equally yummy. From the distant reaches of the castle, there came a sound unlike any Despero had ever heard, even with his ears. Is it the sound of magic? To him, it's as if a clear stream ran across crystalline rocks through beautiful towering trees. We know it as music. So Despero followed his ears, and without even knowing it, he was off on his very first quest. Our little friend was searching for music, but instead he found a human, a sleeping princess, a sad sleeping princess. The kind of sad that comes from loss. The kind of sad that spends each day gazing through the window. The kind of sad that one gets when one's heart has been broken. And there she was. Like she climbed out of the book he was just reading. <gasps> Are you a rat? Despero gazed at the waking princess and then, though he knew it was against mouse law, spoke. No! What are you? A mouse? I am a gentleman. 
Are you sad? Yes. Why? I miss the way things were. I miss my mother. Oh, of course. I miss the way she used to sing along to my music box. But I lost the music box key when I was a little girl. I'll never hear that music again. I'm sorry. And it's silly, but I miss the way she loved soup. If only we could have soup once more. But that's impossible. I just read a book about a knight who could do the impossible. Perhaps you could do the impossible too, my good gentleman. From that moment, Despero was smitten. As Despero was becoming better acquainted with the princess, Furlow and Lester were thinking of ways to turn Despero into a proper mouse. I tried, but he refuses to fear. Oh, what do you want me to do? Take him to the outskirts. The outskirts? Oh, I'm scared just talking about it. Perfect. That's just the response we're looking for. Fine. I'll try. Bless you, son. And remember, stay scared. Despero, you're not supposed to overcome your fears. You're supposed to let them stop you. When are you going to learn to mess up like a real mouse? But Despero's thoughts were consumed with something bigger, something brighter, something bluer, and something that seemed to be pleading for his help. The clear blue eyes of Princess P, which had not left his thoughts since he saw them. Um, I've got a problem. You're telling me. Or maybe it's an opportunity. Furlow, I talked to a human. You what? Princess P. You are losing your mind. And you're taking me with you. I have lost my mind, and my heart with it. I'm in love, Furlow. You'll be banished! She's so sad. I really want to get her something to cheer her up. Banished! Just something small. They will fling you down through the gate to who knows where. She told me a story about when she was a little girl. She lost the key to her music box. Oh, just stop! It's a crime for me to even be hearing this. If I remember correctly, a mouse took it. La 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 la, Despero's talking and I'm not listening. Thanks, Furlo. You helped me figure it out. You helped me help the princess. Don't say that out loud. Don't even think it. Don't say or think what I think you just said. They'll banish us both for good. Despero! And so, hoping the key would be the key to bringing happiness back to the castle, Despero set out to return it to P. I saw it with my own eyes. I was up in the human world searching for buttons and such. Well, you know the way I do. I just found a particularly lovely one, all spangly with a little filigree around the edge. Madam! Yes. Well, I look up and there he is. The little Tilling Mouse speaking to the human like it was the most natural thing in the world. And you're certain he was talking to a human? Yes, yes, the yellow-haired skinny one that looks like a quill. They had a lovely chat. Hmm. This is grave indeed. Your Excellency, I present the parents of the accused. Mr. and Mrs. Tilling, what say you? How do you defend your son in the face of these allegations of very un-mouse-like behavior? Of conduct unbefitting a mouse? We can't turn him here. Don't you worry, I'll hang tough. They can bring the pressure, but I will not wilt, not a bit. I will weather the storm of inquiry. Mr. Tilly. It's true, he won't cower, he won't tremble in fear. He explores anywhere and everywhere. He's just, just fearless. <laughs> I can't take him anywhere. We've been terrible parents. Failures? He's a good boy. Guards, bring Despero Tilly. If Despero hoped for understanding, the Mouse Council was the wrong place to expect it. Now, Master Tilly, consider your answers carefully as if your life depends on them. Do you have any remorse for your actions? Well, that depends. On what? On what remorse means. Are. You. Sorry? Uh... No. She was sad. She needed a friend. Despero Tilling. As the wisest mice in Mousedom, we have afforded you every chance. Therefore, it is my unpleasant task to sentence you to perpetual, almost certainly fatal, exile! But we, we've never exiled one so young. My decision is final. 
Young Tilly, I've heard about you. The brave mouse, good for you. What you have now is something every knight lives for, a chance to overcome adversity. Godspeed, young mouse. No one remembers where old Gregory came from. One day long ago, he appeared at the castle and asked to do the worst possible job. He was sent to be the keeper of the dungeons. A mouse? What are you doing here? I got exiled. <laughs> oh, exiled? What could you have possibly done to be exiled? I spoke to a princess. I had a princess of my own once. My daughter. She was a princess to me. But I lost her. You knew a princess too? Because my princess is the prettiest thing that ever lived. And I'd never let her go if I could help it. Well, good for you. She's the most gracious, lovely human I could ever imagine. Go tell it to the rats, why don't you? Despero finds himself lying crumpled in a corner. Worse, crumpled in a corner surrounded by hungry rats. Dear reader, I hope this turns out all right. The rats sweep our hero up and whisk him down further into the dungeons. Down in the depths of the dungeon is Ratworld. The citizens of Ratworld like to see fighting and violence and pain. And they like to eat mouse meat. Their leader, the cunning and ruthless Botticelli, has built an arena where terrible things can happen to a young mouse. <laughs> That's me! Fellow rats! For your entertainment, we have today an especially delectable morsel. He's not the plumpest mouse in the castle, but he shows spirit. Shall we see how well he fights? Bring in the cat! You see, with your eyes closed, you never know what might happen next. Just keep following me. Okay. Look scared. Botticelli saved you from the cat, but he can't control everyone. We have to stick to the shadows, or you'll be eaten before we get anywhere. Has our hero been saved? Alas, he doesn't know for certain himself. He must keep out of sight while he follows Roscaro to find out. Quickly, the two flee to Roscaro's secret hiding place, a place he has never shown to anyone, a place he cherishes, dear friend, like no other, a place with light. Look, this is my light. It's not much, but it's mine. It's beautiful. Like the princess. A great sadness came over Despero. The world he knew above had been lost, but a new friend was found. And sometimes friends know just the right thing to say when your heart is low and sad. Tell me about this princess. She's beautiful. Like your light. Her smile could light up a whole room. And this was how a friendship was born. Over the next few weeks, Despero taught him of honor and integrity and princesses and longing. But he did not know that his friend knew of these latter two very well already. Ross girl. After many days in the hiding place, Despero awakes to find his friend missing. Ross girl. And when he peers outside, he hears a terrible thing. Help! While Despero has been here, much has happened, O oh reader. Roscaro tried to apologize to P, but when she chased him off, he manipulated poor Mig to capture her. It's hard to believe, but sometimes a broken heart can make us do unimaginable things. The princess? The princess? Oh my, the princess! How did this happen? How could this happen? It's Princess P! She needs help! Good work, boys. Put her in the Colosseum, but no nibbling. We're saving her for tonight's feast. I don't have Roscuro to help me get around Rat World. I need a disguise. My little mouse! Shh! I'm in disguise. Oops. I will deliver you from this evil, m'lady, and I will fight to the death if necessary. There's no need to die, my good sir, but go to my father. Take my locket to show him you are honest and truthful. Oh, I am. Honest and truthful and loyal and... I know, but hurry. Take it. It will be my quest. Yes, good. Make it your quest. So Despero carefully makes his way back to Gregory's table. There he hides on a tray of food, just as Louise comes to gather it up. That Meg. Slowful that what she is. Now I have to do dungeon duty. Me! There's a reason Louise doesn't like dungeon duty. The steps are just too steep. Drat! I've dropped it again. Whoa. 
How am I going to get up these giant steps? Like it or not, this sad soul is Despero's only hope of saving the princess. Only the king can command the guards to search the dungeons for Princess P. If Despero can reach him, he can save her. But how can one so small get the attention of one so large? Hello, your highness! Hey, down here, your highness! Mr. King! Hey, look down here! We've only got until tonight's feast! You hear that? Feast! Oh, no. The king, sunk deep in hopelessness and despair, cannot be reached by our brave hero. It's hopeless. Despero will need to turn somewhere else. The princess is in trouble! Sheesh, this is impossible. Perhaps, if Despero can get back home, maybe the Mouse Council would forgive him. Could his family, friends, and neighbors rally to his side? Might those who knew him best help him save P? It was a lot of coulds, perhaps his maybes and mites, but hopes of home were all he had. Oh, my dear little Despero, you're safe. You're safe and sound. I know it's hard, Mom, but the princess is being held in the dungeon by the rats. She's in a terrible fix, and only I can help. In the dungeon? Despero! I know, I know, but I've got to do something. Only a human will be able to help you. Go to the bell tower and ring the town bell, Despero. Ring it as loud as you can and hope it wakes up the humans to their missing princess. Despero rings and rings the bell. It tolls throughout Mouse Town. It echoes out of the Mouse Town pantry and into the castle proper. It even rings in the sleepy dreams of one almost out of work chef. So <laughs> Ah, yes, at last, at long last, I'm going to make soup. Where well, is my sous chef? I need help. Back in Mouse Town, Despero is also smelling the soup. Soup? Princess P talked to me about soup. She thought it could help her. I must find it. Soup? Save a princess? Frankly, dear reader, it seems highly unlikely. Soup is good for many things, but there are limits. Still, our little friend has nowhere else to turn, so he scampers out of Mouse Town and makes his way into the kitchens. Ah! What are you? Boldo, the essence of the soup. Who are you? Help me! The princess is tied up in the dungeon! Someone needs help! Yes! The princess in the dungeon! To the dungeons, giant! Rats! Get him! A giant walking vegetable plate can't help but attract the attention of the ever-hungry rats. And they fall on Baldo with a vengeance. Remove your mangy mouth from me! But alas, the rats bring Baldo down in a scattered, saladly mess. <laughs> my arms! My legs! My greens! Baldo! Despero Tilling has heroically made his way back to the Colosseum, but he is still all alone. He is one small mouse amidst a teeming city of voracious rats. How, oh, how can he help the princess? Oh, no. I can't possibly fight all of these rats. But there is one thing, one in all the world, one thing that rats fear. The cat! They're afraid of the cat! Note this, dear friend. Sometimes cleverness is more valuable than strength. Sometimes it can give you a... how shall I put it? If I can open the cat cage, I've got a chance. That's the word I was looking for. A chance. Let the feast! Despero releases the cat on the army of vicious rats. Look! The cat cage! The cat! Run! Save yourself! The cat! Help! Complete chaos ensues as the rats scrabble desperately to get out of the dungeon and away from the fearsome tabby. Ah! The cat! Run! Hide! Out of my way! Despero and the princess have escaped. Except, dear reader, do you see any difficulties that might come up? Despero has fought off the masses of rats, defeated the cat, and saved Princess P. Surely he can now enjoy the small bit of happiness he's earned. Not so fast, little mouse. Forget about me! Save your own life! If I leave you now, my life means nothing! I've waited my whole tiny mouse life for this moment. Only Botticelli stands in his way. But he is the most vile and devious rat in all of Rat World. Can Despero defeat him as his one last heroic feat? Oh, dear friend, there's only one way to find out. And so, dear reader, 
you've completed the tale. Reach the point of happily ever after. The princess apologized to Roscaro. I'm so sorry. Who in turn forgave the princess? You should be. Who in turn forgave the princess? I mean, we're square. Meg and her father were reunited. Who is the pretty princess? You are. I am. Me. M-I-G. Me. Despero was reunited with his town and family. He's never gonna fear anything. You'll work on him. Who accepted him just the way he was, bravery and all. And the king reunited the kingdom with its first love. Soups on! Despero finally, finally gives the music box key to Princess P. Andre recreates Baldo with every pot. It hasn't been easy. Despero and indeed you, dear friend, have overcome many challenges. But that is the life of a knight. It is, in fact, life itself. And just as in life itself, it's good to look back and remember how you got to wherever you are.